Hello, I'm Michael Keenan, Conference Director of Tides. I'm here in Long Beach, California, with over 850 attendees from 30 countries around the world. Tides covers the latest developments in oligonucleotide and peptide therapeutics, from discovery all the way through to manufacturing. Some of our speakers this week have agreed to share their insights with you on the development of oligonucleotide and peptide therapeutics. Please enjoy the presentations. My name is Shuling Guo. I work at Ionis Pharmaceuticals. I've been working at Ionis for a little over eight years. So I had my um, education, the college education, and also I had my master's degree from China. Then I came to the States and went to Duke University for my PhD training. After PhD, I went to UCLA for a postdoc. Um, after I was finishing up my postdoc, actually there was um, interesting opportunity for me to uh, assist Dr. Owen Weedy, my supervisor, to start up the uh, Stem Cell Institute at UCLA. So I stayed there for about three years, kind of really helping him to, um, from scratch, start up the core lab and get the um, project going and help him to recruit faculty members, set up collaboration, stuff like that. So that was a very interesting experience to me because I really kind of branched out from just being a postdoc working on, on, on your own project. So I was, I was able to really work on the project alongside with some other things that's ongoing. Um, however, after three years, I um, really looked at everything again. I feel like that um, my passion is still with drug discovery. Yes, I'm working on something that has the potential to be the future of medicine. However, I feel like I need to do something right now. So I talked to him and uh, started looking, and uh, I honest was my first job offer, my first job interview even. I went there and really have been very happy with my decision since then. Maybe I can kind of address that question from a little different angle. Oligonucleotide by itself, it's very stable, as you know, and it's water soluble, so it's very easy to handle. For delivery, it's not as big of a challenge as you would think like siRNA. Um, that, but that's for very general delivery. Yes, we do subcutaneous delivery, so it goes to many different tissues and organs, which is good and bad at the same time. Good is you can actually have a lot of opportunities with different tissues, with different cell types, so that you can do different diseases. The bad part is, of course, you want your drug to go where you want it to be, not in some other cells or tissues. So um, yes, in general, delivery is not a huge hurdle. However, to really have targeted delivery, that is a different question, and I think that is the challenge. I mean, in the past quite a few years, GALNAC has really opened up new opportunity for us because now we have really improved potency and we're really talking about much lower dose in the clinic and a much less frequent of dosing. So that really helps with all the different disease indications and also for the patient benefit as well. Of course, the question is, what's the next GALNAC, right? I think it's been a hot topic at the conference and it is everybody, what everybody's trying to uh, work on and really get to. So I think in the future, my dream will be we have different targeting moiety so we can attach to the oligonucleotide drug. So, okay, when you think about targeting type cell, uh, cell type A, you put on this targeting moiety A and it just goes there. And when you talk about using different cell type, you put on different moiety and then just bring the drug right there. So I guess that's, that's the next step, that's the future. That's what everybody is really working really hard toward too. Uh, kind of just, we talked about the target delivery. I do think that's, that's kind of the big next step for, for the industry overall. Um, of course, the, um, what we've been exploring in addition to the target drug discovery is really using local delivery. Because again, with systemic, you go everywhere, but if you actually can kind of contain the drug in the compartment that you really want to um, manipulate, then that's also an advantage as well. But combining 
local delivery, with target delivery, I guess that'll be even better. So when we talk about local delivery, um, we can do like with um, and our I own us, we do CNS delivery by intrathecal injections. We have actually two phase three programs ongoing on spinal muscular atrophy, SMA. So that's very exciting. And then for the eye, we can deliver the drug right into the eye by intravitreal injection. Again, we don't really have much system exposure there either. And for the lung, we can do aerosol delivery. Again, we really don't have much systemic uh, exposure. So again, that's kind of a, a little bit different from the target delivery, but that also can avoid some of the, the very general um, distribution problem. The only oligonucleotide um, therapy that's in the clinic for CF is um, a compound that is being developed by a company called ProQR. That is a company in the Netherlands. Um, so they um, have this, um, I believe it's um, O-methyl modification, and they actually running phase one clinical trials to really get the tolerability and some uh, an efficacy readout. So I believe the data should be available many year sometime. So I'm looking forward to that data. I do think um, this is a really a genomic error. So um, antacid oligonucleotide therapy is really, um, I think it really has the advantage of being gene-specific, disease-specific, and even a person-specific. So personalized medicine, I think, is a way to go because everybody is different. Every disease, even in the same disease, in a different patient, they may be a little bit different. So um, I think really having personalized medicine by using the antisense platform, I think that will, that will really um, hopefully help a lot of patients who really don't have anything um, for now.